Welcome to the Health Coaches Podcast, take 1743. Uh, I am your host, Kevin Davis, and I'm joined by your other host. Howard Jacobson. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I uh, Apparently, I've got the giggles or something here today. Like, I just, I'm, I'm not keeping it together, and Howard yeah. keeps having to click record over and over again and say yeah. his name a bunch of times well i just i just so. got back from from lowe's we're looking at washer dryers and we're dealing with this uh, salesperson who's wearing the mask over like his bottom lip and chin and keeps coughing oh. and oh, I, I, Lord. and i'm t i'm too polite to say anything and my wife is like if you're gonna cough would you just please put on the mask over your nose too i'm like damn yeah. honey. <laughs> that was good i I love my uh, my wife's aunt shared something on Facebook a month ago or something like that about the mask situation and leaving it down off the nose. And I thought it was hilarious. It said wearing your mask with your nose out is like wearing a condom with the tip cut off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. But anyway, so this is going to be the final episode of the podcast because Howard just yeah. got coughed on. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, Not really. Um <clears throat> Hopefully everything's Howard's fine. got a strong immune system. But it did it did make me think like, um, you know, we kind of did have the right to ask him to do that, I yeah. feel like. And I think it's it's related to what you wanted to talk about today, which is like, why don't you, why don't you read us or summarize the question that we got from a, from a listener? Yeah, so we, we got a question from somebody on Facebook who's a listener. And the, the concept, it, it goes into, you know, how do I gain some trust from people that I know what I'm talking about and that, that some of what I'm trying to reach them with has some value. Um, she says, I've got, you know, friends and family members with all these debilitating diseases. And there's just like a list of, you know, all these diseases that we all know people with. And yet, you know, we know that they could be helped by a healthy lifestyle, by a diet that is better for them. And how do we get them to want to listen to us or even want to just hear what we have to say um, you know, cause a lot of people just want to sit around and, and be happy with what they're doing. Right. And, and, and the person, I think it's a, a dude actually from, from missing chins who asked the question, was it? um, was saying like, it's really frustrating to see these people, you know, suffering and going down this road of heart disease and diabetes and all that. When, if they just got woke and would listen to me, I could help them. Um, yeah. So yeah. this is not a podcast about like just going around like being Superman, right? Saving people who don't want to be saved. But I think there's some useful things to talk about that um, almost in, in, in like in relief of this, like what what do we have as coaches that allows us to have those conversations? And, and I do think that there's a lot of coaches who are wondering, like, I do have this superpower and I want to go like give it to everybody. Um, yeah. First, I'm, I'm curious about you. So you like before I think before you became a skilled coach, you were a guy with a message, right? Yeah. So yeah. so what did you yeah, do? I mean, well, and what's interesting is like I almost feel like uh, and, I, and I don't know if it's something in some other life skills that I had. I mean, I've always been good at building rapport with people and connecting with people. So maybe that helped. But I almost feel like I stumbled into being able to approach this with people before having, you know, the level of, of coaching skill that I do. You know, I've I've done various types of coaching and personal training and strength coaching and health coaching for years before I learned the type of coaching that we do and really developed the skills to this level. But I had also already helped people. Mm -hmm. So, right. Well, um, were you, you know, running? Were you running around looking for people to save? Like, no, not at all. And and in fact, you know, directly to the topic in this question, I had and I still have, you know, friends and family members that could totally benefit from from the lifestyle that, that I and many of us lead. And not all, you know, some of them have changed their lifestyles and have had great benefits. Some of them have not. But, you know, my best example probably of that is my mother. She, uh, you know, made dietary changes that were fantastic. She moved, you know, she's uh, maybe a little bit more processed stuff than I do, but, but pretty much plant-based. And, uh, I mean, she went within weeks, you know, she's dropping all these different medications and things like that. But there was a period 
where I was eating this way and living this way and losing weight and seeing all these benefits and knew that it would help her, but she wasn't making these changes. But the thing that I did that was different was I never said, Hey, you need to do this. You know, I, I would tell her interesting things that I learned. Um, I certainly was perfectly open about what I was doing and the benefits that I was having and, and just allowing, you know, the, the people in my life to see that change, but I never tried to push it on anyone. In fact, when I actually initially changed my lifestyle, I didn't even say anything to my wife before I did it. Hmm. I just made the change. And if people noticed what I was doing, they noticed. And then eventually, you know, people who were close to me, especially I would start to talk about things as I learned something or heard about a new study or read one, you know, read Howard's book or something like that, <laughs> you know, I would, I would have some things to share. And as you share that information, people just kind of sort of absorb it. And I, you know, eventually my mom was like, so what would that look like if I wanted to make some of these changes and I'd kind of share some information and, and it just kind of slowly happened over time. But with every person that I've had in a family or friendship role like that, they've come to me. Mm -hmm. Right. So I want to highlight a few things about that. W one is you made the change yourself and you, you your changes became very obvious first from a physical right. level. And I'm imagining also from a mood energy like Kevin's happier to be around. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kevin is handling anxiety very differently, like all the things you did to heal That's yourself. Um, yeah. So like when the first run of the big change program, and I think you came in as as that was sort of wrapping up, but you were part of it a little bit. Right. They, you remember what they called themselves? The Lighthouse Gang. Yes, the group called themselves the Lighthouse Gang because they were having incredible results, many of them. And they were immediately like, like the first thing you do is you want to tell everybody. And that was backfiring. Yeah. And they were having trouble with spouses, with kids, with, with neighbors, friends, everybody, people, you know, random strangers on Facebook. And so <laughs> Josh quoted something that he had heard. And I don't remember where he found it, but he said, lighthouses don't go around looking for ships to save. And so like that, that. the two aspects are, yeah, you're not running around and you're a lighthouse. You are shining right. your light. So for coaches who, you know, who want to help other people, the first thing is you've got to be someone that they want to learn from. Right. You want right. to be shining in a way, you know, it's the, that when Harry met Sally line, I'll have what she's having. Right. I want the results. <laughs> yeah. that, I want the results that Kevin's having. All right. And the second thing is when when the the thing we get as coaches, when someone comes to us and says, I would like you to coach me. We have their explicit permission. All right. And so what we need to do, what we, need to, we need to realize how powerful that is as coaches with a practice, with people coming to us and saying, hey, would you work with me? Or we give a talk at the library and we offer our service and someone says, I'm interested in that that it, it, it almost flies under the radar because we don't think about it. Right. It's, it's, just, it's like a right. transaction. But like, you know, you go to the hardware store and the person sells you the hammer. They need your permission to sell you the hammer. Right. It's implicit mm -hmm. in walking into a hardware store, but it's no less real. Like hardware store people can't run around, you know, like they don't have like a good, good humor truck yelling, hey, buy this hammer, buy this hammer. Right. So well, that's what I was thinking is you don't go over to your friend's house expecting him to try and sell you a hammer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Right. That's that's the metaphor. <laughs> right. They might say, hey, I've got an extra hammer. Do you want it? Or I'm, I'm having a garage sale. If you want to come over and see if they want anything. <laughs> right. But so if we go, if you know, if we want to help people, we can't try to be running around trying to sell them a hammer. Um, and so that aspect of permission, which is almost invisible within the transaction, is everything. And so the question is, how do we get permission from people who haven't given us permission? Um, and what you did is you waited for people to come to you with a question. Yes. All right. And at that point, right, a lot like a lot of us, even coaches, <laughs> 
when someone finally asks us for, you know, asks us a question, like we've been waiting for this our mm. whole life, right? For years, yeah. like, mom, wake up, da, 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 right? <laughs> and, and then the moment comes, we are so pent up, we stop being coaches. And we're like, yeah. read the China study, read reverse and prevent heart disease, <laughs> watch forks over knives, watch the game changers, watch earthlings while you're at it. Go, go, get, I'll come over tomorrow with giant uh, hefty bags and we'll clear out your kitchen and take it to the food pantry and go <laughs> shopping and buy all this, right? And- you Just vomit forks over knives all over them. <laughs> right, so what we wanna do then is we wanna t give them advice, tell them exactly what to do, and we wanna do it for them. Right. Right. And the problem with both of those is that they remove ownership. Then now we're the person we bought the hammer <laughs> and now yeah. we're the one who has to keep using it on them because what's going to happen if we go and we do their kitchen uh, rescue and we throw out all their stuff and get them new stuff. And now we see them three weeks later and we're like, how's it going? Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> They went to the grocery store and bought all the other stuff again. <laughs> yeah. And now they're avoiding us because they don't ever want to see mm. us again. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, and, you know, so it's interesting that, that you kind of make that comparison because I have actually a great example of kind of the difference between the two. Um, I had a conversation before everything really blew up with this with this COVID pandemic and we were still allowed to, like, have friends over and hang out. We had a couple that is friends of ours over to our house and we were hanging out. I was making some pizzas, made some cashew cheese, you know, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, of course, they know that I've lost 100 pounds. They know of our lifestyle. They know that we're raising our child this way and all that kind of stuff. And um, she just had some questions. She's like, you know, and, and this is someone who's just got you know, just a couple of pounds, like to tighten up a little bit, you know, back in fighting weight, you know, or whatever type type of a situation, but uh -huh. had a few questions for me about, hey, you know, how would you go about this? And it was very interesting that so there's three of us sitting there and I am asking the coaching questions of, well, you know, what are you doing now and getting a better picture and being curious about what the day looks like. What is it? Are you eating something? Are you, and it, you know, it turns out we went to coffee with all this creamer in or, or something like that, you know, is kind of where we started a couple of little points like that. The other person sitting there at the counter with us then is going, well, you need to do this and you need to do this and let's change that. And guess which approach worked, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, and, and so, but it was just very interesting because there was a time just a couple of years ago where I would have been the one going, oh, well, if you switch this and this and do that and read this and look at this, you know, documentary, then you'll know everything and you'll and it'll fix. <laughs> right. So the first like, so. so when someone comes to us and they mm. they don't know that they want coaching. Right. How many right. times have someone come to you and said, hey, would you help me think, think, think something through? Yeah. <laughs> right. That's highly advanced. Mostly they say, yeah. I need help. Or can you do it? Yeah. Can you cook for me? Can you tell me what to, you know, give me a meal plan, right? That's what we hear a lot. Oh, that's well, a big sorry. one. <laughs> I need a meal plan, right? And there's, yep. there's, there's reasons for meal plans. You know, there's, there's reasons that crutches exist too. Like people who have broken mm -hmm. legs, you know, it's a useful thing. It's still a crutch, yeah. right? So, so that's one scenario. The, the second one is what if somebody, and by the way, I've been, I've been thinking about this a lot because this is the chapter I'm working on with Peter Bregman, a book on how to change other people. So um, mm -hmm. I hope I'm not giving away the book. People will still buy it when it comes out in two years. Um, but the second thing is, what if someone comes to you not asking for help, but just bitching? Like, oh, my gout. Oh, I just found out that, you know, look at my blood test or I can't believe I'm so fat. And they're just complaining, but they're yeah. not asking for help. So at that point, what do we do as coaches? Right. Have you had have you had that experience with friends and family? So, you know, I, I suppose a little bit. I don't I don't know. Hmm. I kind of have to think on that one a little bit, <laughs> you know, if I if I've had specific examples of that. But I think, you know, to me, this is another example of where just having a conversation and trying to get a better understanding of their life and their lifestyle and, and things that may contribute to this oftentimes can end up showing them the blind spot. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So again, we want to you know, like I can feel I can think about like, you know, there was a guy on my Frisbee team back in the day when humans could, mm. you know, be in con contact with each other, be on and, teams, be on teams and throw plastic at each other. And he's and he was complaining about, you know, he had heart issues. And, you know, he was a, he was a very fast runner back in the day. And he's gotten you know, he doesn't eat that well. And and I'm like, oh, let me tell you exactly what to do right in my head. But, you know, so yeah. it's, it's not like being a coach means I don't have the same impulses. I've just I've just had a lot of practice in reining them in. And so, yeah, so to stomping them down. You know, so at that point, <laughs> the the move when someone's complaining. So when someone's complaining, they are essentially refusing accountability. Right. right. Whatever you're complaining about, you're not doing anything about. So so there's a huge gap there and we want it. We want the other person to be accountable. I'm not going to volunteer to become his personal chef and savior. Right. So I have to turn if I want to help him, I have to turn his complaining into accountability. So and the way to start with someone who's complaining is empathy. Right. Because if someone's complaining, there's a th they're, they're referring to a threat right? and people are scared. I, I can't believe I'm so fat. Like, you know, someone I was I went to school with and now I'm still pretty fit and they're not right. They've put on the American, you know, pound and a half a year since 1987 and they're upset, scared. And so they're in fight or flight. And when you're in fight or flight, you don't move from a very generative brain place. Right? Right. So we've got to get them there. So the, the best way to to sort of lance that boil is empathy. And especially if they know that you're healthy, they can tell mm -hmm. that they feel like, OK, you're way above them. And so you can you can even that out and make them feel you know, the main thing is to make them feel safe with you because they're not going to have a useful conversation unless they're safe. And empathy and curiosity following empathy like, oh, that mm -hmm. that's that's, you know, you look really frustrated. You look, you know, it's it's hard to. Uh, to keep gaining weight and not knowing what to do about it. Right. And so get them to say, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, l I love that you described it that way, because that's that's actually just I think really key is to have that empathy first. Before any questioning, um, you know, the example, because, you know, you asked, I've had that with friends and family. The example of this situation that that came to my mind is someone in a coaching situation that made similar types of comments to that just today, actually. And always my response to that is make sure that I have, you know, just like what you said, use some empathy and have that initial comment first. Otherwise, you sound like you're just coming from this lofty place of like, well, you should be like me if you want to fix that problem, you know? <laughs> right. Even, even you know, even to do like, um, you know, start by asking questions. If you start with curiosity, you don't have a relationship in that moment with them. They are right. They're in pain and you are being their savior, even by asking questions at that point. Right. You know, I, th I think it almost feels like people when you immediately jump into the questions in that type of situation, then it sounds to, to the person more like your question is instead of. For example, hey, are you eating any vegetables? It sounds like, why aren't you eating any vegetables <laughs> in their head? Yeah, that's that's so true. It, it, you know, because <laughs> as coaches, we want we are very careful with our language. But if somebody yeah. is in a fight or flight in a defensive state, it doesn't matter what we say, they'll put it through that filter. Right. When you think back to, you know, speech class or any time where you were taught about how communication works and, you know, that the aspects of communication are not, it's not just the words that Kevin says. That's what communication is. There's also you've got to remember that it is what the person hearing it takes from that is also a part of what that communication ends up meaning and sounding like. Right. So. I never took communication class, but now now I don't need to have. Yeah, skip it. That was that was you speak it, right? well. And, yeah. <laughs> cool. So so then we get to uh, how, how are you doing for time? Because I know you're uh, you're expecting a, a food delivery or. A... 
You doing good? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm downstairs, so I won't hear any noises. So okay, good. So, <laughs> so well, the, this is the heart of the question: was what do you do when people don't come to you for help or advice, or even to complain? Yeah. They're just going about yeah. their merry way, self-destructing, and you care enough to help. So, have you ever tried? Right. You, you see the problem with them. You see yeah. the problem and you want them to take responsibility for it. And I'm curious if you have ever tried that. Not successfully. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, that's I mean, sort of in a way that that's why I said that I like to try and have them come to me, you know, wait until someone asks me questions. To be fair, though, I do. I do think that I kind of may be more likely to uh, you know, brighten that light. You talk about the, the idea of the lighthouse and the lighthouse isn't, you know, going, oh, that ship over there needs saved. But if you're the keeper of the lighthouse, you do make sure that the lighthouse has a bright light and that it's working and that mm. everyone can see it. So you mean, and so like, I think that's kind of more. You mean like wearing your shirt that says fiber making pooping great again? Yes, I, I, I love that shirt. I don't, I wish I had that shirt. Actually, I've got mine is, um, Eat plants, take epic dumps. Yep, I got that one too. So I, I have, the, I've, I've bought the whole line. Collect oh, them, nice. collect them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are great. And exactly, though. I mean, that's a perfect example because, of course, especially you know those that are kind of a joke, so you can bring it up and everybody can laugh about it. But yet, there's also some information there and some value there. Yeah. Yeah. So I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah. The other example is. Sorry, Go ahead. I was just yeah. say the other example of making the light shine, you know, for myself, um, the Instagram that I do, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, I part of my lifestyle change was I enjoy cooking and I wanted my wife to be able to to, to change and to eat this way with me. Um, and I do the cooking at, at home. And I knew if all that I did was had a bowl full of kale with some beans dumped on top and no seasonings <laughs> and she came home from work, she'd be like, yeah, I'm going to go eat something else. Wait, I, I need to write that so, down. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, note, note to self. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> so I took it, the approach of like, this was a hobby for me. I wanted to learn, okay, how can I make, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, having people over and making pizza. If I can have a whole grain crust and I, you know, I don't even put any oil in there and it's, you know what I mean? And it's this, this relatively healthy crust. But then I can also put a homemade sauce on top. I can take some cauliflower and some cashews and a spoonful of tapioca and some garlic and blend the crap out of that thing in my Vitamix. And it's like a cheese sauce to put on top. You know, if I can do things like that, that mm -hmm. taste like delicious meals, um, I enjoy it for one, learning how to do those things. And then the people around me, my wife, the people who come over for dinner, things like that, are going to enjoy the meal and see a whole different aspect of that. All right. That reminds me what, um, you know, vegan activist chef Bryant Terry said. You know, he's basically an activist for social justice, racial justice. He's also a chef and a cookbook author. And he said, I'm yeah. going to mess this a little bit wrong. Start, start with the visceral, move mm. to the cerebral, and end with the political. It's like you don't start oh, preaching yeah. to people until you fed them. <laughs> right? So absolutely, well, and that's very true of how human nature works, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, remember, you know, how do they get anyone in college to go to one of those things? Is yet a pizza. pizza? Oh, there's pizza. I'll be there. What is it? Yep. I don't even care. <laughs> oh, it's pizza. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm going to join the Theosophical system. I don't care. It's pizza. Is there pepperoni? Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so. T Temperoni. <laughs> Not in those days. So the, per <laughs> the person who's done this the most that I know is Josh yeah. Lajani. Yeah. Who and his approach, you know, it definitely was not um, without side effects. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you have you have to be willing to risk something of the relationship if you're going to go up to someone. And I think, you know, I think basically what he did it did was he just led with love and yeah. and truth and vulnerability. And what that would look like is, you know, Mama, I'm really worried about you. I want you around. Look what happened to Bam Bam and Mama. I want I don't want that to happen to you. Will you listen to me? And the way he tells it, there was a lot of fighting, a lot of anger, 
what ultimately worked in that relationship was the depth of his love and the unconditionality of it. Like he wasn't going to stop coming to dinners. He wasn't going to cut her out or make her pay in any way. He was not going to withhold anything. It was still unconditional love and a constant barrage of damn it, get healthy because I love you. And yeah. that in concert with his own, you know, dramatic improvements eventually got through. So I would say I would say, first of all, you have to be willing to take a risk because it's risky um, to be willing to be vulnerable, vulnerable about why why this is so important to you. And the vulnerable is it's about love and fear, love and loss. Um, and then and there's gentle ways again to 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 talk about it. So if you, you know you want to lead with the punchline with I'm really worried about your health, about your mood, about how you're doing. And I think I might have noticed some blind spots. That like I, I know you're you know, I'm guessing you've tried a lot of stuff that hasn't worked. Would you be would you be open to talking about it? And you're probably going to get a no. <laughs> and they're probably they're probably going to be mad at you several times. <laughs> right. So this is a long game. Yeah. And and, it, and it's an answer to an impossible question because there's no there's no right answer to how do you influence other people who haven't asked for your, your influence. Right. Well, and, you know, there is the fortunate aspect that, hey, we're coaches, so we do have the ability to talk to these people when the time comes around where someone's willing to talk. But uh, but you're right. It's a long game. And, you know, even in a coaching setting, uh, for example, Howard, some of the some of the work that we do now is with people who are coming to us just simply wanting to get healthier or to lose weight, not knowing anything at all about how we would ideally recommend for them to do it. Right. And how our dietitians recommend within, you know, within Wellstart. And yet we still see I mean, we've seen some of the people who come in eating and thinking that, you know, di a diet would be almost the opposite of what we would say as some of the best success stories. But even in that case, it may take weeks or months and it may start with, you know, having one leaf of spinach, you know, or, or whatever that is. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm suddenly thinking is like at first we would like in our minds sort of almost write these people off like, oh, boy, this person is being really yeah. obstreperous. This person's being very yep. defiant. And we've seen enough of those people turn it around that it's almost to me, it's like a good sign. It's like when when doctors complain about patients asking too many questions and trying to take control, like the difficult patients are typically the ones who do well. Right. It's like maybe so, that's a sign that they care enough that they care right. enough right. and that they already they're not willing to surrender their autonomy. Yeah. So that the people who come in saying, help me, fix me, I'll do whatever you say are weak in autonomy in, right. in that account, self accountability. The people who fight us at the beginning, this is really interesting. I, the people who fight us in the beginning <laughs> are, are showing the kind of spirit and energy that's going to make them successful if they end up adopting our protocols. Right. Yeah. And you're right. And I mean, and, and again, like I said, those are the people sometimes who end up with, you know, these amazing transformations. Uh, wow. Yeah. Ooh. It's interesting where that went. <laughs> so, guys, you're seeing learning in the <laughs> in the making here. That was like a thought process we didn't even uh, plan to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was thinking of like replacing my skull with like those top loading washers that, that you can watch. It's like clear, <laughs> yeah. like, like you can see neurons, you know, joining and connecting. And <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I can I can remember years ago when you know, those started becoming more common, like the top loading with the clear and everything. Uh, being over at my boss's house, it was like my boss and his fiance and I just standing there just watching that thing as it ran the whole time. Yeah, I wouldn't Good get, way to spend a Friday night. I wouldn't get any work done. We, I convinced my wife we got to get the, the uh, <laughs> opaque top. Yeah. <laughs> the worst ones are the front loading clear. Like, That's what we've got. The baby loves them, though. Oh, right. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad we were able to, to finish with some appliance uh, advice for people. As we always should. Yeah.
<laughs> All right. Anything else from you on this topic? No, I, I think that was great. And, and I love just kind of some of the, like I said, the things that we ended on there that we uh, hadn't even intended to discover or discuss. Yeah. So, so, uh, so for the person who asked the question, um, would let, let us know if you have follow up questions, if we uh, if we nail the reply for you and if mm -hmm. you want, like uh, let other people know how to contact us, how to ask us questions so that we don't have to think about what to, what to talk about. Yeah. So if you uh, if you wanted to email us, of course, if you want to go to the website, we've got healthcoachespodcast.com. You can go over there. You can check it out. Um, you can find us, obviously, through all of the podcast sources where you would listen. If you're listening to this right now, you probably already have. But uh, in all of the notes, we've got links over to the website and everything. We're on Facebook. And if you join the group there, great place to ask us questions and join conversation with us and with any of the other uh, coaches who are listening. Um, or you can just email us at healthcoachespod at gmail.com. Awesome. And I was just I just went to healthcoachespodcast.com and people can leave a reply for any of the yes, they can. The, the posts. They can. Yeah, I didn't realize yeah. that. And they can still see all the uh, the parts of the website that we haven't fixed yet, like the <laughs> the template bits for like the template stuff, <laughs> the template stuff that has a, an entire team that we've never heard of. Oh, I forgot to take those off there. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Sorry, guys. I'm supposed yeah. to do that. <laughs> I'll own up. <laughs> well, we haven't got any complaints yet, but um, Kevin, yes. thank thank you for uh, for everything, for all the things you do do. Do do. Yeah. You said do do. Yeah. Thank you, Howard. This is I, I think so far. So what we're a couple of weeks in here of, of actually having things going. This is 20 to uh, this is 18 or 20 somewhere in there episodes that we're at now. So um yeah i, I can't that, count very well but we're one, somewhere in that range i think you know? this one will be 19. 19 right yeah so we're about to hit 20 and uh it's been going well we've been really enjoying this and i hope that you guys have too so we'd love to just hear some feedback on that like do you do you like the style of how we're doing this yeah uh, Kev are kevin, there changes you'd like to hear kevin and i spend several hours a day just talking to each other talking about how great this podcast is and it's because we're not getting yeah. enough feedback yep so <laughs> if you want to if you want to unleash well, well, our productivity I just kind of realized that we, you know, we always ask for questions and topics, but also feedback would be fantastic because we do want to make sure that this is something that's useful for other coaches out there to help you, um, in, you know, improve your coaching practice and, and be better at what you do. Right on. All right, man. Thanks so, again. Thank you. Thanks to everybody who's, who's tuned in here and we will catch you next week. All right. Ciao.